of Michael Jordan telling a flight attendant not to feed Horace Grant after Grant had a bad game. Well, that led Horace to directly contact Shannon after the show. So Shannon, please tell us, what did Horace Grant have to say about the situation and about his relationship with MJ? So yesterday, probably around, Skip, I say one o'clock my time, maybe a little later, I got a text message. Horace Grant wants to get in touch with, touch with you. Do you mind if I give him your number? I'm like, uh, sure, no problem. Um, so about five, ten minutes later, Skip, my phone is, is, is ringing, but I don't, recognize, I don't recognize the number. I don't answer numbers I don't recognize, sorry. And uh, so leaves a voicemail, check it out. Sharp, it's me, Ho Grant. Give me a call at your earliest convenience. Okay, I called him back. I said, what's up, Ho? He said, hey, Sharp, how you doing? So we start talking, Skip. He, I'm, from, I'm from rural South Georgia. He grew up in Sparta, Georgia, which is more middle Georgia. We're about two, a little over two hours apart from each other. So I'm very familiar with, Har with Horace Grant and where he grew up and he and his brother. So we start talking. I say, okay, bro, shoot me straight. What's going on with this deal? I mean, Mike said you can't eat, lot, lot, lot. He said, Sharp, I'm telling you 100%. That did happen. Say this, the, uh, the flight attendants, they're serving us, and he touches the flight attendant and says, hey, he doesn't eat because he played like poop. And Ho said he stood up and said, F you, Mike. So he went back to confront Mike, one of his teammates, if I'm not mistaken, Skip, he said it was Brad Sellers. He said, nah, G, don't worry about it. It's not worth it. He said uh, there, have been there are several times that he and Mike almost came to blows. He told me that it started from the day he got there, that Mike started this, what we would term bullying, from the very first moment that he walked in. So they always had heated practice. That, that was always a source of contention with him and Mike. And he told me, Skip, he said, Mike, this is the way Mike was. If you did not confront Mike, he would ride you every day, all day, all the time. He said, you had to stand up for yourself. He said, really, the only, the only person that Mike didn't do that to was you know who, and the guy you know who is, is number 34, Charles Oakley. Uh, Hard said that he and Charles still speak to this day. He and Charles are very good friends. He said, but he had a problem. He said, I didn't have a problem with Mike, the player. I just had a problem with Mike trying to motivate me to get me to do my job. And he said, no, nah, that wasn't going to happen. He says, I did speak up for myself. There were several times that I tried to, that I was going to confront Mike and put my hands on Mike. He said, Skip, they asked him about this in the video. He said, Sharp, I looked dead into the camera. I said, Mike didn't want to see me then, then, and he damn sure doesn't want to see me now. They cut that out. He says, there's some other, Skip, I'm not going to get into the other stuff. I say, Ho, he said, look, I want you to tell everything what I'm telling you. I said, nah, bruh. I don't feel comfortable saying that. Uh, some of the other things that he told me, I say, but as soon as Fox Studio is up and running and we can have guests in, I want you to come on and you tell that side of the story. Skip, I don't feel comfortable saying all the things that what he told me. I'm going to let him share that with y'all. Okay. Forgive me, Shannon, I can't hear you very well, so I'm not exactly sure okay. everything you said, but we, we did talk about okay. it, you and I, yesterday on the phone, so yes. I'm going to kind of go off yes. our phone conversation. Okay. Right. I, I have high regard for Horace Grant. He had a long and strong NBA career. He played 17 right. seasons, so he's no joke. He, he's no vagabond. Right. He's no, you know, sort of extra set piece to this story. Right. He was the ACC player of the year at Clemson. He led the ACC in Correct. scoring and rebounding his last year there. And he was, the Bulls had two first round picks. They actually traded up a little bit higher to get Scottie Pippen in 87. And Horace went 10th overall also to the Bulls. So Scotty and Horace Correct. came in together. And Correct. right away, Horace was, was a very good player. So I'm, I'm going to take nothing away from him. And to his credit, the one year, and this will be episodes, you know, that we see this coming Sunday night. What are we up to? Um, yeah, seven, seven and eight, right? Seven, eight. Six yeah, and seven, seven, and eight. seven and eight. Seven and eight. In, yeah, in, seven. Ep in episode seven and eight, we're going to see Michael go play baseball for a year, double A in Birmingham. And in that year with no Jordan, 
Horace Grant made the all-star team. That was the one and only time he made the team. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give him that much respect. Now, let's get back to Michael Jordan. He drove Horace hard. He saw right away that Horace sometimes needed to have his fire relit. He didn't always play with the focus and the fire that Jordan demanded. And it got a little ugly, and it got a little ruthless, and it got a little heartless. That's who Michael is and was. That was the guy whose whole life was committed to winning championships. In the biggest picture, Horace Grant was blessed to play with Michael Jordan. As much crap as he took from Michael, as demeaning as it was, as insulting to his manhood as it was, it was courtesy of Michael Jordan that Horace won three rings right out of the box there, 91, 92, 93. Three times he won championships in a row, in large part because of Michael Jordan. That's the guy, that, and again, Michael was the, the unofficial head coach of that team and the unquestioned leader of that team, and he drove everybody similarly, but like the great coaches that we talk about who, who decide I need to motivate different players different ways. He motiv Correct. motivated Horace ruthlessly by challenging his manhood. And again, I'm sure Horace was that close to wanting to throw down and, and let's just see who's the, the most man here. I'm sure he's very close to right. fighting Michael <laughs> and he deserved to. Yeah. I, I got it. It, it, was, it. it was worthy of fisticuffs. And, and I'm with you. If you put me in that situation, I know for sure if you put you in that situation, them is fighting words. You're going to have to yeah. see who's the most man because you have to, you have to defend your dignity. But yet, mm -hmm. that's Michael Jordan. And I've never defended the how of it. I've, I've just defended the it of it because that's how he won six championships in six tries with six MVPs. Mm -hmm. Because he was psycho driven and yet he had high basketball IQ, high psychological IQ, and he decided he is going that there's a weakness in Horace that he's going to challenge and make Horace try to rise up to Michael's level. And if he'd wanted to fight, I'm sure Michael would have been happy to fight him. And could Horace have won that fight? Maybe it's 6'10 versus 6'6. Six, six. Maybe he could have. And Horace was a guy who averaged a couple of years 10 rebounds. So he had the yeah. ability to be tough. Yeah. But Michael didn't think he was always tough enough and focused enough and driven enough game in and game out. So when he didn't show up, Michael told the flight attendant, no food for him on the way home. And right. it's Michael's way of, of saying, you, you're not worthy of food. But it's not like Michael locked him in the closet and said, you can't eat for 48 hours. <laughs> he obviously was able to eat when he got home. But in the end, you, you have to realize that, that Horace Grant had a great ride because he did win three championships. Then he did make the all-star team. And guess what all that got him? It got him a five-year, $50 million deal with Orlando. So he got to leave after 94, which was Michael's baseball year. So when Michael came back, right. Horace was in Orlando. Oh, and in those days, right. in 94, $50 million, which he got all of, a lot of that was a lot of money, yeah. man. That was big money. Yeah. So Horace got yeah. paid. So, so the sacrifice he made, the price he paid, to, to have to live with Michael Jordan's abuse paid off because he won championships. And then he was blessed enough later in his career, 2001, he got to win a fourth ring with Shaq and Kobe. So that'll also work. Yeah. Got to reunite with Phil right. Jackson. So, so right. again, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I can't condone it, but I will defend it right. because I, I feel for Horace. I, I hurt for him because that was some low stuff he had to go through. And to this day, he's yeah. bitter about it. And, and I get it. But remember, Michael even held Horace accountable 
for the Jordan rules, the Sam Smith book he that did. was not all that right. flattering to Michael Jordan. And Michael said in the documentary right. the other night, this past week, uh, past Sunday night, that, oh, Horace. that was from Horace Grant. Yeah, he just flat out blurted out, that was from Horace. Well, it wasn't all from right. Horace, but Horace was a good source for Sam Smith, the Chicago Tribune. And yet, mm -hmm. I believe a lot of the Jordan rules came from Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Krause, and also from Phil Jackson and the assistant coaches, who also would talk to Sam occasionally, quote unquote, sort of off the record, you know, just in passing. Sam obviously covered the team, traveled with the team, lived right. with the team. So it wasn't just from Horace, but I think a lot of the locker room stuff came from Horace. But didn't Sam Smith follow Jordan sometime to the golf course? Didn't he? Wouldn't he walk when Jordan was on the golf course at times during the uh, during the season when they would go? If Sam Smith would go, at one point in time, didn't they have a didn't they have a a, a a a a decent relationship with each other before this book came out? Uh, with Sam Smith and Michael. Yeah. Um. I, I don't know that for sure. I wasn't there yet in Chicago. I worked with Sam okay. briefly in my time in Chicago, but I, okay. I'm not sure. We, sh we shared the same literary agent, but I, I'm not sure of that deep background on that one. I just okay. know that Michael was not happy with the book. Michael would not talk to Sam for at least a while right after the book came out after the first championship season. You know, it came out in, I believe, 92. So... The, the point was, Michael, uh, what was his quote? He, he said, um, I'm going to laugh about it and I'm going to move on, was his quote. Like, it was right. all just, to him, fiction. Well, it wasn't fiction. Uh, Michael was protective of his image and obviously his sneaker-selling image. But mm -hmm. I think the book was, was spot on, dead on, bullseye, and... Now we're getting to see that Jordan in the documentary that Jordan has signed off on, which is why Jordan said uh, right before it, it started airing, I'm afraid I'm going to come across as a horrible person. Well, I think to a lot of people he does. But again, right. we're getting to see how you go 6-0 and in finals with six finals MVPs. And Shannon, it, it's... It's the, it's the flip side of Tom Brady's leadership. I always laud his leadership. Tom Brady leads with love, if you will. Now, he'll, he, he will shred you vocally, verbally, yeah. in practice yeah. or games, mm -hmm. but, but he's not, he's not going to fight you. And let's do LeBron. LeBron is a lover, not a fighter. So, so all of his right. leadership is what they call passive-aggressive. He'll be critical maybe through social media, but he's not going to fight anybody. He's not going to fight a teammate. Right. And we're going to talk later about the fist fights, the punches thrown in practice at Steve Kerr and Will Perdue. Right. But, but this guy is the flip side of Brady and LeBron. They lead with love. And Jordan led with fear. He wanted to strike fear in everybody. And all those players who who didn't love Jordan in practice, loved having him on their side in games because they knew he was the baddest man on the planet. Skip, I believe the way I look at it, Skip, uh, Skip, Skip that I believe you can motivate a person without being disrespectful. And I didn't have a problem. Dan Reeves was probably the, probably Mike was the toughest on me, but the one thing that I wouldn't tolerate and that, you know, he and I had a conversation. I said, Mike, I don't have a problem with you, you know, coaching me. But I won't let you disrespect me now. I said, now, some of the things that you think you might be able to say to other guys, if my granny wouldn't say it to me, I won't let you say it to me. So coach me. But don't be disrespectful. And that's the problem that I have. I think Mike, what Mike, be a leader. But I won't let you be disrespectful. But Skip, I think that comes from the mentality of different locker rooms. Under no circumstance, there is not one guy, be it the best guy, be it the quarterback, be it the defensive lineman, where they will let, where someone will let you openly and blatantly disrespect. Because I've been in locker rooms when the best player and a guy that you wouldn't think have thrown down because the guy that, that wasn't the top guy felt he was being disrespected. And that was the difference. They know, Horace knows, I lump Michael up, I'm up out of here, it's a one-way ticket. But... Let me ask you a question, Skip. 
Charles Oakley has a bad game. He's not playing well. You think Mike is going to tell the flight attendant, hey, don't feed Oak. If you're a leader, you, you, you leave. About Charles Oakley? Um, Charles Oakley, no. yeah. That, that was the one guy <laughs> physically that Michael respected. And, and yet, yes, you, you saw what happened. Oak was gone. The only reason that Horace Grant got to be a starter was because Jerry Krause shipped out Charles Oakley in favor of Cartwright. Yeah. Remember that? And right. right. So they, because the, the, the explanation was we're not tall enough. You know, we need a center. We right. need Bill Cartwright, need a seven-footer. Right. And, and Oakley right. obviously went to the Knicks and became an opponent and a rival of Michael's. But – no, Michael respected him. He was an elder statesman. He had been there before. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, Charles no, Oakley was known as I what? The, the, what's that? The toughest. The, oh, Jordan, I think, Skip, if I'm not mistaken, Jordan got there. Jordan got there in 84. So uh, I think uh, Oak got there in like 85 or 86. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, because like you exactly. said, Pippen yeah. and Horace Grant, oh, Pippen and Horace Grant came in in 87. And so I think Jordan, yeah. I think Oak came in 85, Skip, or 86, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right. All right. Skip, remember, yeah. Oak was out of Norfolk State, or HBCU. So for him, and I think, uh, so for yeah. him to be able to, to parlay that, and I think Oak played like 18 years, Oak was as tough as they come. You didn't try Oak. And that, that, was, right. that, was a, mean, they, that was a that was a different era back then. Okay. Again, Charles Oakley was regarded as the toughest guy in the league. So would Michael <laughs> pick on him? Would he try to motivate and light his fire by challenging Oak's manhood? He would not. But again, no. it's like Jimmy Johnson always taught me when I covered Jimmy Johnson's football teams. You, you motivate different players different ways, different sets of rules right. for different players. And Michael smelled a little bit of weakness in Ho Grant, where, where he's saying, I got to keep lighting his fire for him because he doesn't light his own fire enough. The talent's there. The drive is not there. The mm -hmm. focus is not always there. So he pushed him to toughen him up. Oak didn't need to be toughened up. He was already the toughest guy in the league <laughs> when Michael <laughs> met him. So... Yeah, okay, I, I got Skip, it. Skip, Skip, what people don't realize, Horace Grant was a four-time uh, 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 all-defensive player, uh, 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 all-defensive team. He was. He, he, he made was the second also. team. Yeah. So he he was he was very tough. But the one thing he wanted me is like he's like he's like Sharp. You know, growing up, how we grew up, eating raccoon, eating possum. And I was like, I know. I say for me, Horace, I don't need nobody to toughen me up. My upbringing toughen me up. Let's go play basketball. Pass me the ball. I'll show you in practice. John, don't try to toughen me up. Let me show you you can trust me by throwing me the ball. Ask me a question against this split, against this front. What coverage are they going to run? And I'll get it right for you. But if you think fighting, I said the only thing fighting is going to prove, I can kick your ass. That's the only thing fighting is going to prove. It ain't going to prove I'm ready to play. Trust me. And so, like I said, Skip, I told you yesterday, and you know some of the things that I've said. I'm like, Skip, I don't feel comfortable saying that on air. That needs to come from Horace Mouth. And I said the first I chance agree. that we get and we can open up that lot, oh, yeah. Grant, you need to come on our show and you need to tell your side of the story. I said because I can't do it justice like you can. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.